you. Um, my name is Frank Fransen, uh, and welcome to the session. In this session, we, uh, uh, Eric Ringdahl and myself, will present on how we see that attack uh, defense crafts analysis will support SOC C sort operations. And uh, so this is part of ongoing research uh, in a European project, H2020 project, as they are called, uh, called Socrates. Um, and as you can see in the title, uh, uh, of the Socrates name, attack defense crafts is uh, is yeah <laughs> one of the founding uh, components in there. We started in uh, September uh, 2019, and uh, so we are yeah more than halfway uh, further. Um, we are doing this uh, project with ten partners, and each partner has a specific role and bring their own expertise. Um, particularly relevant are two partners that are. Uh, yeah, end users in our con uh, concept, and that is Memnonic, which is an MSSP in Norway, and there, um, and then Vattenfall, which is an uh, yeah an, an energy supplier in uh, in Europe, a big one, and their security operations center in Poland, which provides uh, the SOC services to uh, all their business units for the IT uh, environment. Um, they will function as uh, as pilot environments for uh, for the project, um, and each of the other partners bring technology. Probably you know Zero Server. They will bring um, threat intel uh, specific for uh, for the platform. But I will show you that a little bit later. Um, but what is it what that we do, and why do we do that? So the why is best expressed with this uh, Anisa threat landscape uh, uh, statement from uh, 2017. That said, cybersecurity community is still far from striking the balance between the defenders and attackers. And, and then the last sentence where you see the increase in the defense levels and expenses cannot successfully reduce the cyber ex threat exposure. So, so it, you can even increase the level of funding, um, but we are still having troubles here. So, it, and, and this is not only caused by the asymmetry between the defenders and the attackers, where the attackers only have to succeed once and the defenders have to always succeed in protecting everything. Um, but this has to do with uh, a couple of, of elements also. So, so the ICT infrastructure is increasingly complex and changing into the, uh, and, and, and the interdependencies between all these components is making it complex. And if we don't know what, uh, what this actually looks like and it's changing all the time, then it is becoming harder and harder to actually uh, defend it. You can only defend what you know that you can defend. Um, on the other hand, we see that there is an increase in the number of attacks and the complexity of these attacks. And, and that leads to an increase in the number of events uh, that, that the SOC has to uh, um, yeah, uh, get, get to work on. And, uh, and not only the, the, the things that you can detect on the log events, but also on all the threat information and vulnerability information, et cetera. So all the, all the relevant information has to be dealt with and considered in the context of your own infrastructure. And then um, we also see that attacks get more automated. And whereas the response from incident response teams is typically human centered. So um, it's actually machine speed versus uh, human speed, which is uh, yeah not, not the greatest uh, situation. And where in addition to that, you also see that there is a shortage of skilled cybersecurity staff that actually is capable of doing this uh, incident response task. So, Given this, we and, and the statement above, we think that there is a need for change, and, and we need to do uh, more automation and and support um, um, yeah, the SOCs and the C that uh, that protect our infrastructure. And so the project objective is develop and implement a security automation and decision support platform that enhances the effectiveness of the SOC C cert operation. And as you can see from the picture, it's not the intention that we take the human uh, out of the SOC. Um, but we want to add more automation to enable them to make more informed decisions, um, in, in decisions on what is going on, but also decisions on what are the options for response. So we identified five use cases for which we actually want to um, uh, come up with analysis and, and the, uh, the responses, and that is... Um, ongoing attacks. So we detect an attack, we assess what's going on, what is the threat, what is the impact, uh, what are the, the ways to contain the incident, and then we provide that to the, uh, the SOC C sort analysts, and then they can choose uh, to activate our suggested response. Um, 
The same is for uh, um, new threat intel. When we learn of a new type of attack or a new uh, way that a particular APT group is uh, doing their attacks, then we can assess that in the context of our infrastructure and um, determine uh, uh, if we have to take particular measures to be better protected against those uh, threats. Uh, the, the third use case is when we discover a vulnerability in our assets. So we run a vulnerability scanner. Some assets are uh, software is, uh, is new vulnerabilities in there. We assess uh, what that means for that host, but we can also assess it, what it means for other assets. And if those assets are compromised more easily due to the bug in some other system. And the same is for use case four and five, which is a system configuration for use case four and new systems being added. And each of these are just events that we automatically want to assess what that means for the exposure of certain critical assets in our infrastructure and if we have to take certain um, precautions. So there is a big difference between use case one and the other use cases. So this is actually an incident response case. We have an active adversary in our midst and yeah, we, then you have to be careful how to actually uh, go about it. So this is a, 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 bit, a bit of a difference than these ones. The, the other ones are more focused on increasing the resilience of the infrastructure before the actual uh, adversary comes along and try to exploit it. Um, so based on these use cases, we identified capabilities and those, that, that were the basis for uh, building this uh, Socrates component architecture. Uh, we don't have time to actually go into all the details uh, of it, but you can see that at the bottom, there's the typical things like detection here. This is a seam which is um, existing. That's why we made it uh, light blue. Um, but we have several components that interact or collect data from the uh, infrastructure. We have threat intel up here and shadow server is up here collecting um, malicious data and, and then um, analyzing it and providing that as threat intel. And on the top row, uh, we have analysis tools and in the middle you see is an orchestration integration engine. We use activity that's a workflow uh, tool to make uh, the workflow for these for the, the use cases that we have and uh, as an integration engine to communicate to all these, these uh, tools we use the cortex uh, platform from uh, the hive project and that uh, enables us also to easily add other tools um, because the hive project has already provided several interactions, cortex analyzers and responders for uh, for integration in that. So that um, is what, what um, the platform looks like. But in this talk, we focus on the infrastructure modeling component and on the A to G analyzer. And the question is, why do we actually need this? And we have to explain a bit about what A to G analyzer actually is. And that is easily explained by saying, well, you have a model of the ICT infrastructure, then you have models of an attack step and how the attacker goes about. You place an attacker on the model, probably on a firewall connected to the internet, but you can also place it, if you know there's an asset compromised, you can place it on that asset and then see how he will maybe go further in your infrastructure. But if you have this done, these two components, then you can calculate the attack path of the attacker, how you can compromise a particular asset in uh, your infrastructure and all these steps. Eric will present this and also demonstrate this. But yeah, we need a model of our infrastructure and that infrastructure changes. So we need a, a tool that can automatically provide this model uh, for every time we want to analyze it for, for a new type of event for each of these new use cases. We do analysis based uh, using these type of uh, tools. So we looked around for uh, an, an infrastructure modeling component that could provide it. In some environments that can, but for a typical enterprise uh, ICT environment, uh, we couldn't find such a tool, so we um, had to build our own. Um, this is kind of what, how it looks like. So we have uh, existing scanning tools or data sources um, that, that can be used. We have adapters to collect that, and we want to automatically um, scan uh, the infrastructure, continuously update the, the data. We want to normalize the data so that we can understand in for these applications what it actually means, that we don't have different languages. 
Time dimension is important so that we can say what is the infrastructure look like now, but we can also ask the question, what did, does the infrastructure look like a month ago? For, and that can be beneficial for threat hunting. Uh, and it has to be multi-organization because yeah, we uh, MSSPs have to also be able to uh, use it. So the, the concept of an organization, uh, a uh, customer has to be in there. So when we started to build this, we identified that these components were actually similar to what uh, Memnonic has built uh, or for their ACK platform. ACK platform is a threat intel platform. It's open source, and we use it also in, in the um, Socrates platform as a threat intel platform. And it's um, yeah, you can get it uh, at this address. I think that, that um, it has been presented at first in, in previous sessions before, so it's an existing component. Um, we have to change the data model in here so that we don't have the threat intel. So we changed it a bit for, for our own. And the data model that um, um, is actually used, is, it looks like now this. So we have a host, um, which is assigned an IP address. Um, the IP address is a member of a network segment. Um, you have routes, you can have firewall rules assigned if this host is a firewall. And there's software that runs on the host with potentially vulnerabilities and we have the CVE identifier there. Um, it has to be extendable in a way so that, that we can add it. And one of the things that we are currently working on is adding Active Directory with it. So we had a talk today already, but we have to extend this model also a bit, but this helps us also to analyze uh, um, the user policies. Um, and NetFlow data, and this is particularly for the impact assessment uh, relevant for which assets uh, have a, a relationship with other assets and how much traffic do they uh, obtain. And that can say something a bit uh, about impact uh, there. So this is the data model that we have currently. Um, and this is how it looks like um, at the moment. Um, this is the test network. Um, so you have network segments here with issued IP addresses. This is the host. We don't have the fully qualified domain name here, but uh, the IP address, the running software on it and the CVE. This is a test network, very basic, but uh, yeah. And this is where I hand over to Eric. Thank you, so Frank. Stop sharing. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, I'm Eric. I work for for City, and I want to talk about what we do uh, in the ADG, so the Attack Defense Graph Analyzer in in the Socrates project. So the main purpose behind the ADG is to perform attack simulations to be able to predict how an attacker might uh, move through your infrastructure uh, and how risks might propagate. And, and with this, we will also uh, quantify. Uh, how likely it is that these attacks are successful and also find the most critical attack paths to your, uh, your high-value assets. And uh, we can do this in a few different types of scenarios. So looking at the current infrastructure and how it looks now and with the security configuration you have. Um, we can run simulations once you make changes to this architecture and when there are new vulnerabilities or when you have added security controls, for example. We can also tailor this simulation to new threat intelligence. So how the attacker behaves is dependent on a new threat intelligence. Um, also changing how, um, how the attacker behaves based on what type of actor, threat actor we expect in, um, in, in our infrastructure. And also we can look at probable causes and effects of indications of compromise, which I'm gonna demo uh, for, for you today. And the, the high level architecture uh, is, so these simulations in, in Socrates are triggered by a cortex analyzer. So it's a, it's a part of a, of a framework called cortex by, by the Hive project. And we use that to integrate with the different components. So the analyzer will collect data from the IMC, so the infrastructure modeling component. So collect data about the environment, 
and also uh, threat intelligence. So about threat actors and yeah, threat intelligence. And then we, we have the orchestrator that is um, integrating all of the components and, and triggering the simulation based on, uh, on specific types of scenarios or use cases. So, so, and the functionality the ADG provides is provided by a tool uh, by us called uh, SecureCAD, which is based on an um, on, um, open source framework called the meta attack language, where you can define the logic of, of these types of, of attack simulations. But the main concept is that we, we create a model of the infrastructure, we run attack simulations on that to then um, to then analyze our environment and find suggested mitigations, the critical attack paths, and also quantify uh, how much effort is required for attacker to, to succeed. Um, so these models are automatically generated based on data from uh, the infrastructure modeling component, but it can also be generated from um, uh, from data sources such as uh, your cloud infrastructure or um, data sources that, that, that you have in your environment already. So these models contain then information about your environment. So the hosts and the firewalls and the users and their permissions. Um, and, and, uh, but it also contains information about soft values like um, the user's security awareness. And if you have processes applied uh, for, for, for certain security controls and, and so on. And all of this, all of this logic and this specification is defined in this meta attack language uh, framework. Uh, we can also account for uncertainty. So uh, you might not have data about everything in your environment uh, or about how your users behave on, on their free time and, and so on. But we can account for that uh, un uncertainty in by, by using these models and also by using um, uh, Monte Carlo simulations uh, in our in our simulation engine. So what happens when we uh, run these simulations is that we we generate these huge graphs of all possible uh, paths of an attacker through the environment. So how can an attacker move through our environment based on the data we have? Um, and we use then Monte Carlo simulations to sample this graph and also do shortest path calculations to find the, the shortest path or the, the most likely path through this, through this complex attack graph. So all of the security expertise and the, the logic of the attacks is built into the tool. So you don't have to have that um, expertise, uh, but the tool does that for you. And by doing this, we can also quantify the results. Uh, and the metric that we use is called time to compromise. And that's basically the, the probability over time that an attacker will succeed. And you can see it as like the effort required for an attacker. So a low time to compromise means that it is very certain that the attacker will succeed and it requires no effort at all. A high time to compromise means that it's really complicated and it might require some complex types of attacks, or there is a lot of uncertainty in, in, this, in the simulation. And then based on the simulation, uh, the tool would then generate reports on your risk exposure, um, the, the, the threats and weaknesses that you might have, uh, and the impact to your high value assets, and also these critical paths to, to these high value assets. And these paths will then expose how an attacker would be able to move through your environment but also how we can stop the attacker as, as soon as possible, uh, what we call suggested security controls or suggested mitigations. So how can we stop the attacker from succeeding as, as soon as possible? So I'm gonna show you how this, this works in, in, in a brief demo. And I'm gonna show you uh, in an AWS environment, a, a test bed that we have set up in AWS. Uh, I don't have access to the Socrates platform at the moment. So we will use uh, GuardDuty as the threat detection in, in this case for AWS. Uh, but that's a great thing about Socrates, the platform as well, that it's modular and you can change out components um, as, as you deploy it. So in this case, we will look at AWS and we will use GuardDuty to, to detect the threat in our environment. 
So the AWS environment that we have is a small, simple, uh, multi-VPC environment. We have a few virtual machines, uh, some networking and peering and load balancing. And we have some sensitive data here. Uh, we have some customer records in an S3 bucket, so a storage service in AWS. And we also have some customer data in, in a database. So that's our, our high value assets in this case. And now Guard Duty has detected um, or had raised an alarm because we have some command and control activity direct, uh, detected on, on a bastion host in, in our environment. So that is our starting point when, when I run this when I run this demo. Um, and we're going to look at the impact, the possible impact of this command and control activity. Uh, also look at the, the root cause so we can see how was the attacker able to reach this bastion host. And we're going to look at some top threats and, and suggested mitigations for, for this environment. So I'm going to jump over to, um, to SecureCAD. And what we see here now is a, is a list of collected data from our environment, which is AWS in this case. So, um, so the tool will automatically generate a model of your environment. And we can take a look at that here. So what we see now is a visualization of our, our AWS environment. We can zoom in a bit here to see our customer database, for example, um, a virtual machine called the our web server. And we also have our Bastion host here. And I can just show you quickly here in, in AWS. So um, this is the AWS console, and this is the virtual machines that is running in our, in our demo environment. So what we see here is a representation of that data that we have actually in AWS right now. So it's all your uh, network configuration, the IAM setup, all the users and their permissions and, and so on. And all of that is, is, is represented in this model. What we can also see here is our attacker coming from the internet in this case, but it is also connected directly to our Bastion host. So, um, so we had this uh, command and control activity in our environment. So the attacker will start from that bastion host and we will then see how that could affect our, uh, our environment. So this is the, like the attack scenario that we, that we are gonna, gonna simulate. Um, so let's go back and look at the, the report for that simulation. So we have based on uh, the threat detected by guard duty in this case, we started a scenario and got a simulation of, uh, of that scenario. And we are now looking at the report for, uh, for, for that specific case. So we get some high, high, um, high level uh, risk exposure values. Um, and we also get, get uh, detailed information about our high value assets. So if you remember, we had a, a customer database and an S3 bucket with some sensitive customer data. And we can see based on our simulations that from the Bastion host, the attacker is able to yeah, basically read all of our customer data, also delete and write uh, the customer data in our in our database here. Um, and the time to compromise, as mentioned earlier, is really low, which means the attacker is succeeding very easily and with a very high probability. And we can look at why that is now. So, uh, so now we're looking at one of these critical paths. So how is the attacker able to uh, impact our high value assets based on, based on the threat detection that, that we got? So the attacker is starting on our Bastion host because that's where we got the alarm. We know there is some suspicious activity here. And then based on our, our AWS uh, configuration in this case, the attacker is able to exfiltrate credentials to a database management role, which is attached to this virtual machine, which then lets the attacker basically change the master password to the database and then compromise it completely. And in this case, read the database. 
So that is how the attacker succeeded with our database. If we look at um, the S3 bucket, we can we get some other paths. Um, and here we can actually see that there's also a vulnerability in our, our environment here, because with the, with the integration with other components, we can also take data from, for example, a vulnerability scanner and see how these vulnerabilities could um, could affect us in the context of our environment. So as we see here, the attacker is also able to reach our S3 bucket based on this vulnerability. Uh, but there are also other paths. So if you remember, these are Monte Carlo simulations, like a, a statistical method. So there are other paths that are possible, but they are less likely and will produce a higher time to compromise. Uh, which uh, so so they are less likely to to succeed, uh, but they are still possible given the the configuration and the attacker profile. So the type of attacker we are we are simulating, um, and we also get some some information about uh, common denominators between these attacks, uh, risk exposure and risk vectors. Um, so a threat summary. So what types of threats are we experiencing? So these these types of these um, risk values and the threats and so on are communicated to other components in in the Socrates platform. Uh, so other components will use this data to perform other other types of of of, of analysis. So for example, these threats are also mapped to like Stride and Mitre Attack, which can be used in other uh, reporting features in, in, in the platform as well. And also the suggested mitigations. So what should we, what should we do about this? Um, so in the Socrates platform, we also have a component called the uh, Course of Action Generator. So this gives information to the SOC operator what you can do to, to fix this or to lower the risk exposure. Uh, and also um, come up with strategies. So how, in what order should we apply these mitigations and when should we do them to, uh, to lower the risk exposure, but also to make sure that we have um, the, a good uptime and, and don't disrupt anything and, and so on. Three minutes so, to go. Yeah. Eric. Yeah. Uh, so, just the last thing I want to, to say, um, we can also have different types of attacker profiles, like how APT28 would behave or how some other types of APT would would behave based on the threat intelligence uh, that we that we get. Um, yeah, and I think Frank has some concluding remarks in 30 seconds, maybe. Yeah, so, so we've seen that, that what we think is that this can be beneficial for SOC C-SWIT operations to increase speed of operations and facilitate informed decision making. The Socrates platform will um, pilot the platform in the first half of uh, 2022. Um, and at the end of that, we will have a demo pilot where we have an event problem. Yeah, so that, that's the plan. Um, another thing is that most of the components uh, will be open sourced. Some of them are already open source, and, and uh, yeah, you can follow us at, on uh, on the website of the Socrates, and we are on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, so hopefully next year we have a, a demo where we can show the whole uh, platform. Thank you.